going to start by giving you guys a little bit of the background about the overall case. I'll introduce you to some of the most important people that I'm going to be talking about and then we'll get to the timeline of events and some theories. So her name was Tammy Lynn Leapert. She was born in Rockledge, Florida on the 5th of February 1965. She was a beauty queen. She was an extraordinarily pretty teenager. From a very young age, she competed in beauty pageants. Between the ages of four and 16, she competed in around 300 pageants. So out of them 300 pageants, she took home 280 crowns. She was completely lined up for success in modeling or um, becoming an actress or something of that nature. From a really young age, she told her mum that she didn't want to just be famous. She wanted to be known as an actress. She wanted to be in films and that was like her ultimate life goal. It also helped that her mother, Linda Curtis, was a theatrical and modelling agent. She helped Tammy through a lot of her successes. So uh, up until like the age of 16, she was a completely ordinary teenager. Of course, she had a little bit of the limelight and she competed in beauty pageants. She didn't like express any sort of mental issues or anything like out of the ordinary from your average teenager. So as I mentioned, her mother Linda was this agent and she like helped Tammy through a lot of her success. Mother Linda has since passed away since Tammy's disappearance and all she wanted to know before she passed was what has happened to my daughter? Is my daughter alive or is my daughter dead? And she unfortunately never got to hear the answer to that. Um, which absolutely breaks my heart. So in terms of like police reports um, about Tammy's disappearance, um, her mum was the complainant. Her mum was the person that like reported her missing. And there's not much to read about about that overall relationship, but it seemed pretty like average mother-daughter relationship. There was nothing to suggest that Linda was forcing Tammy down this path in life. It seemed like her, Tammy was quite happy doing these pageants and yeah it doesn't suggest that her mother was overly pushy one thing i did read about was that her mother was like at the time of tammy's disappearance her mother didn't have any other clients so allegedly linda did rely a lot on tammy's income so i don't know how much you want to read into that um i personally kind of overlooked it Okay, so I'm going to quickly talk about two other people who played a big part in Tammy's life leading up to her disappearance. First, we have Wing Flanagan. Wing Flanagan was very, very, very close to Tammy. They were almost like brother and sister. Um, he was a family friend. I obviously knew a lot about her personality and he could tell when something just wasn't right. The next person I want to talk about is... Keith Roberts. To read up about this case, a lot of the time the person that Tammy is described as being with on the day of her appearance is blanked out. He's just described as a friend. Um, but reading further into it, it seems that Keith Roberts was in fact the man that she was with the day of her disappearance. So Keith Roberts was a good friend of Tammy's for two years. I believe they were in the same acting class. Linda always thought there was something unusual about Keith in that he was very secretive about his past and where he lived and he also claimed to be 20 years old, only two years older than Tammy Lynn. Um, although I believe now so has been found to have been 22 at the time, so he was only two years older than he claimed. Linda described Tammy as being somewhat afraid of Keith, but I don't know whether this was just simply because he was quite a closed book or whether like she was actually physically afraid of him. So Tammy Lynn was 18 years old when she went missing. She was last seen alive on the 6th of July, 1983, and she's not been spotted since and there has been no leads since her disappearance. In 1982, Tammy got a part in the film Spring Break. She went and shot her parts and everything seemed normal. The filming closed, everything was ready. So there was like a weekend after party for the film and um, which Tammy went to. Both her mother and Wing said she'd come back a completely different 
person. These are like the two closest people to Tammy in her life. So if they could sense something was different, something was different. Um, what Tammy said to her mum after she got back from this little weekend party was, mum, what would you do if I told you someone was trying to kill me? Her mum was like, well, is there someone trying to kill you? And Tammy said, yeah. Um, so she also like confided in Wing um, and telling him that somebody was actually trying to poison her and reading like further into this the reason behind this is because Tammy said she witnessed something big something illegal something she should not have seen while she was at this weekend party and that because she'd seen this somebody was out to kill her so after she got back from this weekend party she kind of went into a little bit of isolation seclusion she kind of distanced herself from wing and her mother and she was like very she became very paranoid um thinking someone was trying to kill her thinking someone was trying to poison her um she was getting like rather concerned she was getting to the point where she wouldn't eat off her own plate she would eat off other people's plate that's fine she would not eat off her own plate she just didn't trust it she thought somebody even a family member or a friend could have been trying to poison her um and also she would only eat out of sealed containers things that hadn't been open or tampered with which is like as you can imagine quite unusual behavior but i can kind of understand that if you believe somebody is like seriously out there to kill you or um or hurt you in some way, you would take some precautions, but around your family and your friends, people that you can trust, people that you love and care about you, it was kind of a little bit odd. After two weeks of being very isolated and displaying quite unusual paranoid behavior for Tammy, um, she got a part in a huge big budget Al Pacino movie called Scarface. Um, so this began shooting in March 1983 and Tammy went to stay with her family friend and attorney Walter Leibowitz um, while she was shooting for this film and Walter said everything seemed quite normal, everything was going well until the fourth day of filming. I was watching a scene where somebody was stabbed and fake blood spurted out of them and she started having a breakdown. She was freaking out, she was like screaming that she had to be taken back to her trailer. Um, she was displaying some quite out of the ordinary um, emotions and feelings and anger and it just didn't seem right. So Tammy quit the movie and went home. So during this sort of time, her mother made her speak to a local sheriff about what was going on because if she was be really truly believing someone was trying to kill her, the sheriff should know. Um, but actually in the talks between the sheriff and Tammy Lynn, she never ever confided in him that somebody was actually trying to kill her. At this point, Tammy told Wing, somebody is definitely trying to kill me. It's not just a maybe, it's not just I have a feeling. Somebody is genuinely out to get me. The 1st of July, 1983, Tammy Lynn snapped. This was like her biggest breakdown. She took a baseball bat to several windows in her house and began just smashing them. She also attacked her best friend Wing, which was completely out of the ordinary and nothing like Tammy had ever, ever done before. At this point, Linda was like, this is not okay. Something needs to be done about this. Um, so she went and checked Tammy in to a local mental health facility. She went to this mental health facility um, to have like a full evaluation, both physically and mentally. And the only comments really made by like the doctors or psychiatrists or whoever was looking at after Tammy, they only said, well, there's no sign of drug or alcohol in her body. That was like pretty much it. And like there might have been more, but I've like searched high and low. And that is all I have found from like her evaluation, which seems a bit odd. Did they not like check for something else? Did they not check to see whether she was like genuinely paranoid, whether it was like true real life or whether it was just all in her head? I don't know, but there was just nothing like said about that. So after 72 hours, they let her go which for me is quite unusual, like 72 hours for a girl who has been displaying like such like emotions and like 
smashing windows and things like that that she was completely never done before which was completely unheard of in terms of Tammy Lynn's behavior surely there is something to be done there are some tests to run there is like something you can find out of that but no so on the 5th of July Tammy met up with her friend Rick Adams um they, they were really good friends she told him like I love you but I'm gonna be going away for a while and at, I, at that point I don't think Rick or like anybody that knew about this conversation would read too much into it because there was like talk of Tammy going to California for some other acting jobs and I guess like if you knew about that you would just think her going away for a while was actually to fulfill the job and yeah I don't think anyone really took too much out of that conversation but now like looking back on it it seems to be like of significance considering she did go away and she didn't come back. So the day the following day the day after her release Tammy was picked up by her friend Keith Roberts who I talked about a little bit at the beginning they had been friends for two years and he picked her up and started driving towards the beach and this is Cocoa Beach in Florida I don't know whether this was the usual location that the pair would go to but it was only five miles from Tammy's house so it could just be that it was nice weather and that's where they tended to go at that sort of time okay so some people have kind of missed out this part and I don't know whether it's like there is like a sufficient evidence to back it up but allegedly Keith Roberts had borrowed money from Tammy in the past and um, so on the day they met Tammy had asked Keith to bring her $300 I don't know whether that was the exact amount owed to Tammy by Keith but I'm guessing it was around that mark because Keith didn't like didn't say no he was like quite open to bringing the money and um, back then $300 and actually still today $300 is a lot of money to be loaning a friend and to be like just like asking for randomly out of the blue. So he brought the $300 and when she got in the car they started driving to the beach and when they were like just near like the glass bank at the beach they had an argument. So, t so Tammy Lynn had asked Keith can you take me to Fort Lauderdale? I need to meet some friends. Uh, for me personally, if my friend had asked me to drop them off somewhere um, local, it wouldn't be a big deal. I would happily oblige. But she wasn't just asking him to take her to her friend who lived two minutes away. She was asking him to do like a six hour round trip because it took three hours to get to Fort Lauderdale from Cocoa Beach. And that seems quite unusual to me for you to be asking your friend to just quickly drop you off with some friends three hours away. So Keith was like, I don't have the time for that. So he said no. So at Keith's response, um, Tammy, like, she started freaking out. They started having an argument. She was like, no, you need to let me get out the car. Stop the car. Stop the car. Let me out. I need to get out. So in my like personal view, if somebody is that adamant to get somewhere three hours away to the point where like he, she like said no when he offered to drive her back home to find another lift to get there, she was determined she was going right that second. And for me, that seems like she was trying to get away. Otherwise, surely she could have made like proper arrangements or asked her mother or a family member or took like a train or something like that to Fort Lauderdale it seems that because she was so determined to get there that she would have an argument and get like Keith to let her out the car she really wanted to get away and you may be thinking that's a little bit unusual did Keith not make up that story um so that he had some sort of reason as to why she wouldn't be coming back anytime soon I don't know but this is what Keith told the police in his interview so on from different sources I found different like descriptions of what Tammy was wearing and what she looked like at the time of her disappearance. A lot of like sources claim she was wearing a, a blue blouse with a flower part on the shoulder, a denim skirt and, and she was wearing flip-flops and she had a grey purse and then a lot of other people and then a lot of other sources suggested she was barefoot and had no um, grey purse to hand. For somebody that has just asked their friend to drop them off with $300 why would you not have a bag? Where are you going to hold that $300?
So Tammy is said to have made three urgent phone calls following her drop off at the glass bank in Cocoa Beach by Keith. Keith is said to have left at this point and she apparently went to a gas station and used like a payphone to make three urgent phone calls. And these are said to have been to her aunt. Aunt was away at the time so never actually answered these phone calls. So Tammy Lynn left her a message. On this message, her aunt was convinced that she was afraid of somebody. In her aunt's mind, there was no way that Tammy Lynn had run away. In fact, she said, that does not wash with me. I'm not sure how much I don't, I don't know how easily substantiated. However, I don't know how easily substantiated these phone calls actually are because there are no there were no recordings ever released. So I don't know how much personally I read into that. You're probably thinking, okay, well, since she made phone calls, since she got the co out of Keith's car, well, Keith can't have anything to do with it because if like he had if there was any foul play how was she making the phone calls but there is nothing to suggest that he did not let her out the car to make the phone calls and go back and pick her up or anything like that um but i'm not going to read too much into that because there was no evidence and you could literally get yourself so carried away trying to like work out whether keith played any role in this whatsoever so that is sort of the timeline of events you'll get the gist there may be some further details out there um if you guys want to do any further research but these are like the most important ones that I felt necessary to put into this video. I'm now going to get onto the police report, which I find quite interesting. So the police report is on sis on Tammy Lynn's sister Suzanne's blog. Um, she is like still to this day working so so hard to find out any information about Tammy. Um, she is like not giving up. She is putting so much effort in. So I like go take a look at Suzanne's blog. If I can find the link, I will put it down below. But um, obviously I'm in the UK and I guess a lot of my viewers are going to be in the UK as well. But if any of you guys did have any information or, you know, if you guys could just share this video or get it, like, talk about it, just raise awareness. I'm pretty sure Suzanne would be, like, eternally grateful for anybody else that out there that would, that would like to, like, support her case. The police report had a lot of names blanked out, but I read read quite an interesting blog post um, and they, they like suggested what names should fit into the gaps. So I'm going to go off of that and it does seem the most like likely. Um, so I will tell you which names were blanked out um, because there is like, it's not 100%. There is no evidence the names were blanked out on the police report. So on the 11th of July, 1983, Tammy Lynn was reported missing age 18. Why, you might ask, was she reported missing several days after she was last seen? And the answer to that is I'm not entirely sure. I believe her mother, Linda, did on two occasions try to contact um, try to contact Keith Roberts to find out where Tammy was because he was of course the last person to have been with her. And Tammy had said to her mother before she left, Mum, I'll see you in a little while. Tammy is not the sort of girl to make a little while into a few days or a few nights or anything like that. So when she didn't return home that night, she contacted Keith Roberts, who said exactly what he told the police and what, exactly what I've just told you, that he dropped her off after an argument. Um, and the mother kind of just listened to that and thought, okay, I'll sleep on it or whatever. Um, she then contacted him on the 8th. Um, and this time she said that Keith seemed to know more than he was letting on. So she was very like aware of this. At the time she was five foot four and she had hazel eyes and blonde hair. So also in the police report is quite interesting. It says that Tammy was introduced to a man who claimed to be a movie producer. Um, so from what I've read, this man seems to be Chris Wilder. This name was blanked out, but this shoe fits him perfectly. So although Tammy was introduced to him and I will get onto who he was a little bit later and why it's so interesting that they the two knew each other, Linda never ever thought that Chris Wilder had anything to do with Tammy Lynn's disappearance whatsoever. Like for her mother to write it off completely, she obviously definitely, definitely from the bottom of her heart knew that he had nothing to do with it. So in the police report, it generally covers pretty much everything I've told you. They were just like the extras that I thought were quite interesting. The fact that she was introduced to Chris Wilder and the fact that her mother did on two occasions try to contact Keith and her mother did have the feeling 
feeling that he knew a little bit more than he was letting on. The first theory and the one that, uh, that the police report gives shines a light on is the fact that like a, a kind of general relationship with Chris Wilder, the two weren't close, they'd just been introduced on one occasion. Reading up on the case, a lot of people seem to believe that she was the victim of the serial killer named Chris Wilder. So Chris Wilder did end up did become infamous from his title as the beauty queen killer. Since then Chris Wilder has actually committed suicide and is no longer with us. He was from Australia and during the space of six weeks he kidnapped and raped 12 women and from what we know about killed eight of them. Obviously he was Australian but these like kidnappings and murders did happen in um, the United States and he was of course in the same sort of area as Tammy Lynn. However, he was only found guilty of these crimes and found to have started these crime these trail of crimes in 1984. You guys can understand the police not linking him with her straight away because his killing spree and kidnapping spree started like a, li a little bit less than a year after Tammy's disappearance. So it just kind of seems that in that space of him meeting Tammy and in up leading up to early 1984, something might have snapped in him. But if you guys want to read up a little bit more on him, he's quite an interesting case. Um, but I'm not going to go into any further details on him other than the fact that Linda Curtis filed a $1 million lawsuit against him. So she did this just before he committed suicide and after his suicide, I believe it might have been before his suicide, but I think it was after his suicide she withdrew this lawsuit. When asked why, like why can you go, how can you go suddenly from filing a $1 million lawsuit to withdrawing it? That doesn't make too much sense. And she basically said she filed that the, she filed the lawsuit because she wanted answers. She wanted to know if he knew anything and like said, okay, I'd never ever believed he had anything to do with Tammy Lynn's disappearance and the police were like, we didn't either. Um, it, it just, it seems too, like obviously it does, obviously when you don't read too much into the dates and things like that, it seems like, well, of course it was him. Do you know what I mean? He was called the beauty queen killer. She was a beauty queen. Um, she went missing. He like kidnapped women. It seems all too, right? it seems like, okay, that case closed, we know. But the timings and the dates just don't add up. The second theory which I've touched on is the theory surrounding Keith Roberts. Linda was actually extremely angry at the police for being so incompetent surrounding the case and in particular in regards to Keith Roberts. The police were initially saying that she just ran away and that was just basically what had happened. She'd done a runner and that just obviously didn't, didn't wash with the auntie and the mother just was like no. This is not like in Tammy's like nature. She would not run away. She's never done it before. Um, so they were like, no, it hasn't happened. So a lot of police still think that Tammy did just run away. And that really upsets Linda because obviously the whole family firmly believe that this is not what Tammy would do. And this is not what has happened. So as, so as I like mentioned earlier, Linda did believe that Tammy was like afraid of Keith and I'm not sure in what way this was. I believe it might just because of his sketchy past, um, but I'm not entirely sure. Linda said that given the fact that Keith Roberts and Tammy Lynn were together literally moments before she disappeared, he was the last person to see her alive, like the police surely should be thoroughly investigating this man. But she said that they didn't. They didn't do like a good enough job. The investigation just wasn't enough in enough detail um, in regards to Keith Roberts. But the police said, the police said, okay, but we have interviewed him and all of like the facts and statements, blah, 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 just don't add up to him having something to do with her disappearance and he's not a viable suspect. And for me, like writing him off so early on in her disappearance is a little bit unusual because you have to take everything he says with a pinch of salt. You don't know that the details he's giving you is like, is true. You don't know what he said might have been true, but was that the end of the story? Did he go back? Did he go looking for her? Did he have a change of heart? Think, okay, I will give her a lift to California. Is he covering for her? Maybe he did give her a lift to California. Maybe she was so concerned about her life that she needed to get away and he's covering for we don't know the list goes on and for a police and for the police to drop him as a suspect so early on 
that does not like sit nicely with me that does not sit well with me at all and I'm not surprised that Linda was upset and believed the police to be so incompetent um surrounding Keith Roberts theories will go on there as I said we don't know she's still missing she's still out there potentially alive potentially dead um which is absolutely heartbreaking. She was so stunning. You could see that her future was going to be so bright. Um, so we don't know. The, the list goes on. You could literally sit there for hours and come up with millions and millions and millions of explanations as to what happened to Tammy Lynn Liebert, but we don't know. And that is probably what kills their fa her family the most. The fact that at this point, it has been so, so many years they don't know they do not know and they haven't even narrowed it down to to a select few um theories um and that like breaks my heart and i can't imagine how suzanne her sister who was like kind of running the whole like investigation and trying to look out for what i mean still to this day um that i can't imagine how difficult it must be having absolutely no lead and no clue so i am going to just drop the last theory that I think is the most significant. These are the three most significant theories to me personally because I believe one of these is what happened to Tammy Lynn and this one sticks with me the most and this is kind of like the most like heartbreaking part of this whole case because I can see this one lining up perfectly um, with what happened to Tammy Lynn and you can look at it with a silver lining um, which I will like touch on but you know it has been a long long time since I didn't since her disappearance so, as I mentioned earlier Linda said that Tammy had come back from this weekend away this weekend party and said somebody was trying to kill her because she had seen something illegal and something that she shouldn't have been seen for and something that she could have been killed for seeing um, so I never really got into what this was, um, but this was a, a large scale drug and money laundering operation involving quite high profile people in Florida and maybe the surrounding areas, but high profile people in general at this time. So having seen this as a, as a teenager, you can imagine why she would be so scared and so petrified. Like personally, I am currently 18 and if I had saw that now or a little bit younger, like that, that is terrifying. You would not know how to react. People that are taking part in such an operation must are criminals they generally are criminals it's illegal and you don't know to what like extent these people are willing to go for to like cover their backs and so if i saw something like that then yeah of course i'd be paranoid of course i would think someone is gonna come get me someone is gonna make sure that i don't talk about this and for me personally a lot of people don't agree and a lot of people say it's just paranoia blah 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 i just personally can see exactly why she was nervous i don't know why she believed she was going to be poisoned maybe she thought that was the easiest way and like the least obvious way like it, anyone could have poisoned her um so i don't know but for whatever reason she believed she was going to be poisoned and i like i do sympathize with that if i thought i'd witnessed something that could put me into a lot of trouble I probably would too be paranoid, I would too be upset, I would too be thinking about getting away. Um, I don't know what I would do, but I, I could. I, I completely sympathise with how she reacted. So her, mo so her mother Linda did say that a, a police report was filed or made in some way by um, Tammy Lynn regarding this situation, but since the disappearance and since like that is that news has come to light, um, no police report has been found. And you could sit there thinking, well, maybe someone took it, maybe someone made sure it wasn't found. I don't know, and it's completely up to you again how much you read into that. Obviously, I said there was a silver lining. So the first like that's like the most like devastating part of this theory is that the people who she believed to be so afraid of, and who her aunt believed she was so afraid of, and who who she told Wing and her mother was gonna kill her they got what they wanted maybe she was gonna pay them off with the money maybe she'd arranged to meet them were they the friends in Fort Lauderdale you don't know but I that is like what a lot of people and probably the majority of people believe is that 
they found her, they caught up with her, and they did what they set out to do, and they killed, murdered, whatever you want to call it, Tammy Lynn Leeper is absolutely heartbreaking, but my silver lining, and I know her family don't believe this is true, and in no way would... And, no, and in no way feel that there is like enough substantiation to suggest that this is true. I believe that because she knew about such a high profile um, illegal operation as this, she could have actually ran away. And like, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, a, a lot of you guys are probably gonna go crazy and say this is ridiculous, but don't you hope that that is what happened because that is probably the happiest ending to this disappearance. That personally is like the happiest way that I can put this in, I can put this out there. And it's the one, the way that I believe in the most. Tammy Lynn asked for $300 the day she went missing. Tammy Lynn, friend Rick Adams, I love you, I'm going away for a while. Tammy Lynn told her mother Linda Curtis I will be back soon I'll see you in a little while we don't know whether a little while is 10 minutes or a few months of course she never actually came back of course if this is true she decided to stay like hidden she decided to live her alternative life I don't know me personally if somebody was so determined to get three hours away from their current location with $300 to meet some friends who she never ever named that to me sounds like she's trying to get away that, me that to me sounds like she has a plan. She has a plan set in place. She knows she's not safe here anymore. She knows that she will be safe in Fort Lauderdale. She knows that there is like a light to the at the end of this tunnel, this horrific um, ordeal she was experiencing, this paranoia. And to me, somebody that wants $300 and somebody that wants to get three hours away and somebody that says that she'll be back that sounds like she is just trying to get away temporarily and whether she just never ever felt safe to come back i hope is what happened or whether she was found out later i don't know i think it is quite plausible personally i think that is quite plausible i personally she maybe she felt because she was so paranoid in that her family or friend or somebody close by to her was trying to poison her whether that be Keith or somebody that had something to do with her acting career or anything like that or her mother you don't know obviously there is nothing to suggest that Linda had any that in any way put any foul play in this whole disappearance and nobody ever thinks that it was her mother but you don't know whether she was paranoid that that was going to happen maybe she felt safer not telling anyone maybe she felt safer she just get away I personally if I thought somebody was trying to kill me and I, my life was actually completely in danger I would do the same thing which is why like which is why this is the theory that I sympathize with the most and I believe to be true is because putting myself in her shoes which is something you always have to do in these sort of cases putting myself into her shoes that's plausible I could have done that and I believe a lot of other people could have done that so obviously share this um, tell people about it make people aware because this case is not closed this Tammy, Tammy Lynn Leeper is still missing um, her sister Suzanne is still working hard and she does deserve some sort of justice or deserve some sort of explanation as to what happened so that or look or agree with that opinion as much as you like counter it I don't know I don't mind but from what I know and from my thoughts and my feelings and putting myself in her shoes I personally believe that she ran away and that is all I want to say that is literally my view there are so many theories out there and it's completely up to your you it's completely your opinion this is just my if you did enjoy watching this sort of video and learning a little bit more about um, a missing person or Tammy Lynn Leapert's like story in general because it's so interesting it's also completely devastating because there is no right or wrong there is no like you don't you don't you really don't know what happened and yeah if you like this video and you enjoy learning about these sort of things um then please give it a big thumbs up so i know to keep um filming this sort of video this is the first video i've filmed on this channel. um comment let me know your thoughts let me know any other people or cases it doesn't have to be missing people it could be murders it could be 
anything, any any sort of like true crime, um, I'm happily, I will happily research and film a video on, so just let me know and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. And yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching and I really hope you can take something from this video and kind of like spread the word. Like don't like let this story like end. Don't let this story just like fade out. Of It's very real and to the, into her family and to like, and to Suzanne, it is extremely real. Like it's still going on for her and that breaks my heart. So yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching.